Baron 1898 is Efteling's B&M dive coaster. It is one of the miniature models, seats about six across, three different rows, and it's got pre-condensed layout. You have that first drop, Immelman, zero G roll, Helix, and then your turn into the brake run. There's not a lot to it. However, you may be surprised to find out this might be, as of when this video is being made, my personal favorite dive coaster, which I think may surprise a lot of people. So what is it about Baron that makes it so good? I mean, look at the height, 98 feet tall, 56 miles per hour, only two inversions? 1600 feet of track why is it so good and i think those of you who have written this know what i'm about to say and it is the theming this coaster would be nothing without the theme because of the theme it has the coolest lift hill structure ever an awesome pre-show a show before you go up the lift hill and it tells a story normally b&m dive coasters i find to be kind of underwhelming they're coasters that i'm like okay yeah it's fine it's always been one of those rides that really intimidates the public, but as a coaster enthusiast, they're kind of one trick ponies to me. But I think to me, this is one of those rare situations where I didn't feel like that was the case with this coaster. Yes, the first drop is the main part of the ride, but I think I was so immersed in the experience that I didn't even care. We did lots of mini dive coasters in Europe, including Oblivion, Oblivion the Black Hole, Crake at Hyde Park, but I would say this one impressed me the most. Oblivion the Black Hole definitely had the best queue line, but this one had the pre-shows that Oblivion the Black Hole did not. And I have a little bit of footage of the pre-show to show you guys. Unfortunately, it's one of those things that you really got to be there to experience and kind of understand the hype. But I love this pre-show because it starts off telling you the story of this mine and what went on in it. And then these ghosts come out and they're projected onto the walls and they go around the room and it's pitch black in there. So all you see is these ghosts and they're doing this ghostly singing. It is like spooky. That is the main pre-show. There is another small one where there's an, actually an animatronic Baron up on a balcony talking to you. That's something you see literally right before you board. You enter this very industrial looking station, you take your seat, pull down your restraint, and then you depart and stop before the lift hill where it continues that show. The ghosts are back, they're singing this ghostly wail in a very ominous fashion, and then the gears start rotating and you depart up the lift hill. And let me tell you, that show, before the ride even starts, gets you in the zone. Like as weird as it sounds, seriously, it gets you pumped up to ride this thing. It's what builds up the anticipation. Now I will say, as cool as that lift hill is, it's something that you don't really notice as you're riding it. That's more of a spectacle for those standing on the ground and watching. But one thing that is very cool is that this does drop into a tunnel. Now I feel like that's not as cool these days because so many dive coasters drop into a tunnel and there's others that do do it better, but it's still very neat, especially since it is a path way the guests are walking so you can watch the coaster drop right under you and then shoot out the other side into your animal men so it's still awesome nonetheless i think it's a great drop if you're sitting on one of those edge seats it is one of those situations where you're like oh i feel like the coaster is too wide to fit in that hole is it going to clear it and of course it does but still adds that thrill level i really enjoyed that drop in the back row you get pulled over because of course it, like every dive coaster it hangs you over there you're staring straight down and because Baron is really the only roller coaster in that immediate area, you do have some other rides close by. But my point is, Baron seems pretty intimidating when you're standing right next to it. Especially, I think, for those people who hadn't ridden anything like it and they're looking up at it, that drop especially is going to intimidate a lot of people. Now, the rest of the layout, like I mentioned in the beginning of the video, is fairly simple. After that element, you have a zero G roll, nice and floaty. Then you're low to the ground, you're banking to the right, and you go into this upwards helix. I actually really enjoy that moment where you're flat lying right up against the ground because it's one of those scenarios where you feel like you're going fast but then once you're right on ground level it feels like you're going a lot faster than you actually are so i really enjoy it when coasters do that after that helix you turn upwards into a little airtime moment it turns you to the side and then does one more turn as you enter the brake run if i could have added anything to the coaster i think it would have been cool to see like another show once you enter that brake run maybe enclose the full thing and have it kind of continue the story unfortunately it didn't do that you just go back into the station and then you're done but it is still neat and this is something i didn't mention earlier but actually one thing i like is that they completely close off the station until you're physically boarding the ride you're kept in 
these waiting areas and then the doors open and there's the train sitting there with all those empty seats waiting for you because that way it's a reveal the doors open you see all the station there and it's empty and ominous it's like it's waiting for you your chariot has arrived I like things like that before my final review of Baron 1898 I gotta give it a score which is gonna be a 9 out of 10 the only things I really would have changed would have been in layout, you know, maybe add something else here or there. But that's kind of a given. Like I said, it is a short ride. It doesn't bother me like it bothers me about some other rides, particularly ones where the theming isn't done as well. So I guess one could say that the theming is compensating for the short layout. But believe it or not, I think it actually works. They did it well enough to make this my favorite ride at Efteling. Which when you have a racing GCI in the same park, that's pretty impressive that in my opinion that I preferred the B&M dive coaster. I feel like they really did a good job with this ride. It was very well executed. But that's just my take on Baron 1898 at Efteling. Let me know down in the comments below if you've written this, if you agree with my thoughts. If you're new to the channel, be sure to check out other coaster reviews I've done. They're all available in a playlist organized in alphabetical order by the coaster's name. So be sure to check that out. And of course, stay tuned for more. I'll see you guys next time.